modern day LED grow lights have come a long ways. This is a full spectrum LED grow light and it is very common currently. It has a blend of warm, cool uh, diodes and oftentimes they'll include something such as an infrared diode. And they all have a little bit different effect on the leaves in terms of the plant's use. So let's talk a little bit about the grow lights and things that possibly you should consider. One of which is this light is 100 watts and it is very nice for a two foot by two foot space. It has a dimmer knob on the side. So if I wanted to, I could drop this LED light down right over the plant at full strength for the most intense light. I could pull it upwards and I could have a slightly less intense light that spreads over a wider area such as this grow right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could turn the dimmer knob down, leave it at this height, and cover a lot of seedlings. And so that gives me a lot of uh, different options. Now, in terms of the on-off cycle, I prefer 16 hours on, 8 off, and use a smart plug and set that over my phone. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the other things that you should consider. Because most of the lights that come in nowadays are on what's called a board, they need to be leveled. Because LED light is largely directional, there's a beam angle on each of the diodes that primarily shines straight down. And to have that leveled puts most of that useful light right over your plant. Another thing to consider would be reflective qualities of a grow tent or if you're growing openly, are you up against a flat white wall, which oftentimes gives you a nice reflective quality. And also when you're looking at things such as this particular grow, where you have two lights side by side, there is a little bit of light gain between the two lights, which is going to affect the grow as well. One way that we can measure the amount of light that falls over these tomato plants is to use a light meter. And to measure LED light, the value is oftentimes measured in something called PAR, P-A-R. So there are some other factors to consider, such as the light is primarily over a smaller part of the plant, but it tends to be hotter in the center. And so your plants will not all receive the same PAR values. Another thing that impacts that in addition to spread is the height of the plants. Plants that are closer to the grow light are receiving stronger light. The plant in the center is 615 par and the plant on the right 450 par and the plant that is hanging off to the side at the top is 350 par. Now what do those values mean to you? Well one is that you're kind of shooting for around 500 to 600 par when it comes to growing these microdorf tomato plants. And the other is something called the daily light in the chagrin. Daily light integral is the a total amount of available light over the time that you run it per day. Now outdoors, that would be hours of sunlight. Indoors, this would be hours of grow light. Now there are online calculators that permit you to put in the par value and the duration that you run the light to get the DLI. So with tomatoes, 25 to 30 DLI is appropriate. However, as the PAR value varied, the DLI that each of these three plants 
is getting also varies. The one on the left has 20.16 DLI. The larger one in the back has 35.42 DLI. And the one on the right has 25.92 DLI. This does seem to impact the plants. For example, uh, the one on the left-hand side is the first one to set fruit. The one in the back that's receiving the most amount of light is the largest plant. And the one on the right-hand side for the mid-range is getting the most amount of blossoms per plant size. Now that being said, there are other tiny microclimate conditions that you might want to consider. Microclimates are oftentimes stated for outdoors. However, indoors, things such as the light angle might produce more light on one part of the plant or one plant versus another. Shading from other leaves. The larger leaves, the older leaves, will shade below those and that creates a little bit of a microclimate for the under canopy. There's also things such as preferential locations in containers. If you have a single pump, you might find that the plant that grows closest to the outflow on the pump grows more strongly than the other plants in the container. HVAC vents for air conditioning and heat can provide too cool, too warm, or even uh, drying conditions on the plants that need a little bit of humidity to grow. And if you are growing next to a window, the sunlight uh, can overheat a plant, as well as during the winter, air leaks might produce too cruel of a condition and that will impact the plant negatively. And the lights that I'm using behind me here, if you're curious, the one on the right hand side is from Spider Farmer and that is an SF1000 grow light at 100 watts. The one on the left hand side is from Vivosun and it is a VS1000 grow light and that is also 100 watts. The systems that I'm growing in right now are from a company called Black Magic, and it is called the Gropel. So depending on what you're growing, it's very easy to go out to the internet and Google things such as the preferred DLI for a plant, hours of day of light, and PAR values. Those are becoming more and more common to find on the internet. And there's a lot of reputable sources from universities and also test centers that will put you in an ideal range for your plant. You'll get better harvest as well as healthier plants and under indoor conditions that are more ideal plants that can easily exceed one season and grow two to three years producing indoors. So if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments, but hopefully this information is useful to you and you're growing.